Welcome to Shorobsas classes. So in today's video, we'll talk about solo growth model. So in today's videos, we'll talk about solo growth model. We'll make a few videos on solo growth model and we'll cover the entire chapter. So first what I'll do is I'll simply explain what is solo growth model. So first we have to explain this what is basically solo growth model. So for this we first need to understand that solo model basically shows what solo model shows that how nation grow through the interplay of saving population growth and technological progress so what it say it basically shows how nations grow how nations grow through the interplay of how nation grow through the interplay of three things we have to remember the first is saving saving second is population growth and finally the third one is technological progress and the third one is so we have these three first is saving second is population growth and third is technological progress so now he basically says he has actually proved conclusively that capital formation which is the result of savings the first is capital formation capital formation then after that the growth of labor force the growth of labor force that is population growth and technological progress co jointly affect the level of level of an economy's output so they basically affect the level of economy's output so they basically determines the economy's output and its rate of growth per capita income over time and its and its rate of growth of per capita income rate of growth of per capita income over time now from here we have stated what that is solo model basically shows how nation grows nation grows as in how nations output grows and how nations per capita income grows over time it is basically determined by three factors the first is savings or capital formation second is population growth and third is technological progress so now in solo's model solo basically focuses on four variables so solo focuses on four variables so solo basically focuses on four variables the first one is aggregate output so the first one is aggregate output which is denoted by capital y the second one is capital stock second one is given by capital k and the third one is labor force 
the third one is labor force given by capital N and finally the last one is knowledge or effectiveness of labor and the first third one is knowledge or effectiveness of labor so which is basically says that which is denoted by capital E so solo focuses on four variables the first one is aggregate output the second one is capital stock the third one is labor force and finally the fourth one is knowledge or effectiveness of labor so output capital stock labor force and finally knowledge or effectiveness of labor so now we'll simply go to the assumptions of solo growth model so what are the assumptions he made so now we'll be looking at the assumptions of solo growth model so first we'll start with the assumption number one so basically the focus of solo model is on properties of production function and the evaluation of three factors of production that is capital labor and knowledge over time so our focus in solo growth model is what the properties of production function so solo growth model is basically based on five assumptions so what are these five assumptions that we will figure out now first assumption is about the economy is closed and there is no government sector so in equilibrium saving is equal to investment so the first e assumption is what the economy is closed the economy is closed and there is no government so the economy is closed and there is no government so we would conclude what that is the saving will be equal to investment that is saving will be equals to investment now the second assumption will be what that is the saving are assumed to be proportional to income such that the savings given by capital S is proportional to income such that that is a part of basically income is saved so saving is what capital S equals to small s into y so it eventually means savings are to be assumed to be proportional to income so it is proportional to income now we'll simply go to the third assumption so in third assumption it is said that is and one more thing i forgot to say that is this is average propensity to save and also marginal propensity to save so which lies between the smallest lies between 0 to 1 so this is something i have forgotten to mention now we have come to the next assumption that is uh, assumption number 3 so in assumption number 3 it basically says that the change in capital stock is equal to gross investment less depreciation delta k so the change in capital stock so the change in capital stock k k is the capital stock is equal to is equal to what the gross investment the gross investment which is i minus the depreciation which is delta k 
that is therefore the change in capital stock which is given by k dot is basically over time is equals to investment minus depreciation so this is our third assumption now we'll go to the last two assumptions for this i'll take another page so now we'll go to the next assumption which is assumption number four so in assumption number four the labor force so here the labor force l is assumed is assumed to grow at a constant assumed to grow at a constant exogenous rate of n small n so that is so the labor is assumed to grow at a constant exogenous rate given by small n so the value of small n will be change in l by l divided by change in small t so it will be change in l divided by l divided by change in small t now and the finally the last and fifth assumption is is concerned with the production technology so it is concerned with the production technology so it is concerned with the production technology so suppose the aggregate production function is written by y equals to f k comma l so the aggregate production function is written as y equals to f into f bracket k comma l now the solo model assumes a constant returns to scale of production function so we have to understand what it assumes the constant returns to scale that is crs this means that multiplying both inputs say by say lambda will give rise to an increase in output by lambda say we multiply this production function with lambda 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 l so if you take lambda common sorry it will be lambda L. so this is known as crs so there are five options so now again in this video i'd like to conclude it here in the next video we'll go to the capital accumulation part so in this video what did we do first we started with solo model so solo model basically shows the that is the nation growth through interplay of three things the first one is population sorry savings the second one is population growth and finally it is technological progress now economies output and per capita income growth of per capita income basically depends on these three things that is savings which is also cap equal to capital formation population growth and technological progress now solo basically focuses on four variables as you know aggregate output is our dependent variable that is y equals to and capital stock labor force and knowledge or effectiveness of labor is given as what the independent part so now we have talked about the five assumptions of solo model the first one is start with it is closed and economy and no government so savings is basically equals to investment the second thing is what that is savings is proportional to income where s is marginal propensity to save which lies between 0 to 1 then finally the change in investment or change in capital stock sorry is what is equals to investment minus depreciation so savings is equals to investment 
because it is closed economy now we have to explain this part savings is proportional to income and then this part investment minus depreciation is equals to the change in capital stock so we have talked about capital stock and savings now we'll go to the last two that is the production technology and labor force now labor force is assumed to grow at a constant exogenous rate which is given as n equals to as you can see n equals to change in l by l so with time over the time period the it shows the labor force grows at a constant exogenous rate and finally the last is production function exhibits crs that is constant returns to scale so in today's video we just talked about the basics of solo model we talked about the assumption of solo model now in the next video we'll go to the capital accumulation part and we'll try to develop the model further so thank you for watching this video if you have any query or doubt you can simply whatsapp me on this number which is 9836 seven nine three zero seven six or you can also go to our website which is www.showdopsearchclasses.com so there you will find a lot of other videos like this and you will also get to see a lot of other materials which are needed for different entrance exam so keep watching have a nice day ahead